Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 5, Episode 10, Princess Spike. Oh my god, I did so much cringing in this episode because I knew exactly where it was going. And why does Spike always have pretty bad... It's not really a bad episode, but it's a bad Spike episode. He, whenever he's alone, it's like, dude, did you lose 100 IQ points? I know, it's just painful. He knows better than this. Yes, he knows Twilight well, but he also knows that he's susceptible to greed. We had a whole episode where he was aware of that. And let's not forget we had a whole episode proving he's not humdrum. And then we turn around and prove he's humdrum. Again. So speaking of that greed episode, that's the one of the few things I liked about this episode where they kind of hinted that he was suffering from some of that because of how his eyes changed and his mannerisms at certain points. Yes, it was showing that, and you saw a descent into that because he went from very pure motives to less pure motives to outright taking advantage of his perceived position. Though I'll give him kudos for not eating the statue at any point. And I give the dignitaries credit for not killing him. Well, I think that there was a little more explanation needed in his apology, is I don't think the dignitaries overheard the part where, yeah, I said it was Twilight and it was actually me. Yeah, that could have been using some clarification. It's just, I ended up pausing this episode a lot and going, oh. <laughs> Repeatedly, taking breaks, walking away. So I got a new high score on Pokemon Shuffle on the current challenge because I was like, yeah, I need to get away from this. I need to play that more, but I also need to play Splatoon more. Ah. I would say Splatoon's more valuable. I only play Pokemon Shuffle and Pokemon Rumble because it's a controlled amount of playtime. If I stick in actual good games like Majora's Mask, Hyrule Warriors, Smash Brothers, Bayonetta, I will suddenly lose three hours. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, I had to take breaks. It's it's nowhere near as bad as Spike at your service, but you're just watching this entire time going, why can they never give Spike a good standalone episode? I mean, just get one of the people who, who writes him well in the other episodes where he's very helpful as a sidekick. Get them to write him in a full episode with maybe different premises, because the premises, I think another problem is they always give Spike lessons that I don't think work well with him but they think will work well with him but they never pull it off because i don't think the lesson works well with him yeah we see at the beginning that he just wants to help because he goes to address the dignitaries and they all start going we loved you princess twilight sparkle we love all the princesses he's like oh okay and then cadence comes to him to ask him to do something important so yay he's being appreciated and then it goes too far. Well, that was another plus of this episode, you know, getting to see Cadence more. There's not a lot of pluses in this episode. <laughs> no, the plus is we get to see Cadence, and that Cadence is um, hinting to Spike, um, are you really sure about your behavior here? Which is nice to see her do, but you know, as a princess, you could have done a little more, like stopped him uh, another plus real quick is sleep delirious twilight <laughs> that that was just plain cute it was but it was like twilight is usually highly logical um so why would she stay up for three days straight and how could she possibly have made the mistake of booking two talks to the same hall at the exact same time maybe she was doing the booking of that on the last of the three days <laughs> entirely possible I would say any other nitpicks, but it's like we don't have time for that. We'll be here like for the next two days. <laughs> I wouldn't spend that kind of time on it. I would have liked to have seen more representatives of other races. Yay that we had a griffin. Technically two, because we had the dignitary and we also had the pastry chef. Yeah, he's back. Uh, I didn't notice, and it may have been there and I just missed it, but I didn't notice anyone from the zebra clans. Yeah, I don't think I saw anyone either. We haven't seen any zebras this season so far, now that I think about it. I mean, we haven't even seen Zakura. And I wonder, okay, how far away is the land that Scorpion was from? Is it actually outside of Equestria? Because all the delegates were from different places in Equestria. Also, one thing struck me kind of odd was when 
one of the dignitaries stated something about like, well, we won't deal with Ponyville anymore. And I'm like, is that a recent thing? Or is it because now there's a princess living there that Ponyville is now important? Oh, see, I didn't catch what city he said. And considering that it was Manhattan, it could have been specifically Rarity because Rarity's made such a good showing in Manhattan. You know, there was actually some world building in this, not just the whole of dignitaries remember, but the fact that apparently there's a plant that dragons are highly allergic to. So that was a nice touch of world building, but considering that Twilight and Spike were encountered a lot for so long, and those were mature trees, you would think Spike would be aware of that, that the trees were there? Hmm. Well, maybe he's aware where they uh, that they are there, but not that particular section of those trees. Because they do transplant fully grown trees sometimes. True. But also, you would think, considering that Twilight basically grew up having a dragon with her, that, I don't know, Celestia might have had those trees taken out. Hmm. Another thing just popped into my head is the fact that, I think his name is Fancy Pants, apparently did try to schedule some stuff and tried to get some stuff done. Why didn't he do more to take other stuff over when it, the princess didn't seem to be quote unquote, doing her job, because he seemed to know what he was doing, and he could have corrected some stuff on his own. Yes, but Princess is the highest authority in all of Equestria, so when there are four princesses in attendance, you're going to take everything straight to the princess, so why didn't anybody go to Cadence? I can understand not going to Celestia and Luna. I mean, they're the major alicorns that control day and night, you know, One's basically your goddess, and the other one was a villain, so I could see being a little hesitant to approach them. But how difficult is it to go up to the Princess of Love and ask for help? Especially if it's not a romantic issue. Like, let me guess, you're here about love problems. No, I'm actually here because there's these trees about to fall on this water pipe that could cause some problems. Oh, I'll go and talk to her about it, because Cadence could walk in and disturb Twilight, because Spike would be okay with that, because, you know, it's Cadence, the person who gave him the orders. Yes, and that's another thing. Why can't Spike just admit that Princess Cadence ordered him to make sure that Princess Twilight was undisturbed? You know, because he kept throwing around the princess power. It would have been much simpler to go, Princess Cadence has stated that Princess Twilight needs to remain undisturbed until the reception. That's another thing. Why didn't Cadence take over Twilight's duties since she knew Twilight was going to be out? You know, she was her full sitter, so she should know, you know, stuff. Plus, she runs her own kingdom, so she should be able to take over the duties for Twilight during that period of time. Well, if you notice, the stuff that came up wasn't specific duties. You know, the water main and the tree trimming were already scheduled. They were scheduled by Fancy Pants, so that wasn't Twilight's problem. The hall scheduling was an issue that came up when they went to go give their talks, so that wasn't a planned issue, and it could have been referred to any princess, you know, anyone in authority to make a final decision. But the default would have been to go to Twilight, because it was announced in the beginning that Twilight spent all that time organizing everything. So she would have been the first choice to go to. Yeah, Spike should have just referred everyone over to Cadence when, the, when problems came up instead of going, oh, I'll try to talk to Twilight. But you were ordered not to have her disturbed, so you could have just said, Cadence ordered that Princess Twilight not be disturbed. If you have any questions, please go talk to Cadence. Yes, but he wanted so badly to be helpful. So that means that he wants to try to take it on himself, even if he's not suited for it. But he still should have just gone with the basic truth and still wielded the princess authority. Princess Cadence said Princess Twilight is not to be disturbed. Double princess power. Yes, and that would have stopped everything. And, oh, I don't know, the pony who was fixing the water main, wasn't he a unicorn? And wasn't the hole in the ground already big enough to put a patch on the pipe? We, there shouldn't have been any need to be jackhammering at all. As for trimming the trees, he couldn't have gone back and gotten a regular saw. Or a pruning pole? A pruning pole would have worked so much better on those trees. Ah, uh, plot convenience. <laughs> Not a very good plot to have conveniences in, because, as we said before, this was a very cringeworthy episode. Yeah, kind of the low point of Season 5 so far, and probably all the more disappointing because it came after Episode 100, which was so fun. Mm -hmm. So, did you have any good points of the episode? That everyone came together in the end, and that Twilight was amazingly rested, 
and that we're getting to see Twilight do actually do things as a princess that makes sense as a princess as opposed to Table Tree Castle Map Hero. Because <laughs> she was a hero before she was ever a princess. Being a princess doesn't mean being a hero. Being a princess means being in charge of stuff. And being royalty usually means you have to delegate stuff, so they're kind of at odds. And plus to Cadence that, well, nitpick and a plus, she said she was going to turn off the water main, which isn't what she did, so nitpick. But plus for that nice crystal bandage on the water main. <laughs> yes, very nice design. I like that. Well, it was nice that they were all putting the statue back together again, but okay, what was holding the statue together in the first place if all the pieces came apart that cleanly and everyone knows exactly where their stone was in the structure? Yeah, and if it was that easily broken apart, wouldn't the weight of the tarp itself have, you know, caused it to separate? You would think, and you would think if you're going to have this nice statue, you would have had some sort of mortar or glue or filigree holding it together. And all of the cities have mining operations? Because those were all very nice jewels. <laughs> huh, that's an interesting point. Well, I gotta say my favorite part of the episode was sleepy, confused Twilight. Just some of the stuff she said was like, I laughed at those. <laughs> yeah, sleep deprived Twilight was fun. When going back to nitpicking dignitaries, so we had a griffin, no zebras, no buffalo. Oh yeah! Appaloosa is within the bounds of Equestria, which means that the buffalo are. But of course then we would have had a topaz stone, and topaz is opaque, and every other stone was, air quotes, traditional faceted see-through jewels. Well, I thought the episode was okay. Once again, we get another Spike episode that doesn't really go above the okay mark. East of us better than Spike at your service. Ah, I can't wait to see what next week's episode's going to be, and I hope it's really awesome. Um, I don't remember cringing this much at Spike at your service. The, um, at the very least, I didn't pause it as much as I did this one. I think it was a tie between this and Games Ponies Play for how many times I hit the pause button. <laughs> That in the movie that does not exist and shall not be named. <laughs> the second one's pretty good. You should give it a shot sometime. But since the first one doesn't exist... <laughs> there can't be a second one. Therefore, it does not exist. <laughs> oh. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Season 5, Episode 10, Princess Spike. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this video... Please leave a friendly comment below and consider subscribing to our channel. Like Lux's art and would like to see more of it? You can find him on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Want to keep track of what's going on with this channel? You can follow us on Tumblr as well. Really like Lux's art and would like some of your own? He is currently open for commissions. Links in the description.